This is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2 New Edition. Okay, coming in from online company very.co.uk is a special edition tablet that they happen to have. Uh, very handsomely packaged in a brown box. We have some stuff on here that uh, probably return jargon or something like that if they happen to return it. <coughs> but this is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S2. Whoop de doo, I might hear you say. This is 2018, the S3 is out. However, Very are doing a new edition of this particular tablet that has been upgraded from the original Samsung Galaxy S2. Now I had the Samsung Galaxy Tab S and I've been using it for about four years and it's actually the most reliable tablet I've used and it had an amazing screen, it was perfectly sized and I loved it to bits. Recently I've had to retire it and I've asked for this instead and there's a good reason why I've asked for this because the specs do step up to make uh, an almost complete package out of the Galaxy Tab S because there were some things about the Tab S that, that really bothered me and the Tab S 2 just wasn't a big enough upgrade for it to warrant um, my purchase. Uh, however this I do feel is. However it's four years later and that's a wee bit strange to go for a tablet that is a successor to a four year old tablet. But then Very is selling this, the 8 inch version for £230. The 9.7 inch version is £299 and that's been recently reduced as well. It's currently on sale which uh, we'll put some links in below as to where to get that. But I'm, I'm quite interested to get this out and ex see exactly what the difference is um, between the two. Not that I have the original S2 to compare it to but we can have a look at it nonetheless. So we'll just uh, On the back here, it shows some of the interesting things that we're going to be pointing out. Uh, we have the same display as the original Galaxy Tab S2, which is an 8 inch QXGA 2048 by 1536 Super AMOLED display. Not as good as the original one on the, the Tab S, however, they have upped some of the color gamut uh, to make the colors a little bit more vibrant whilst the PPI is a little bit less than the original Ga Samsung Galaxy S which is one of the big criticisms of the original Samsung Galaxy S2 when it came out uh, it isn't quite as good a display just on paper and uh, and in reality as well you can see the pixels a little more uh, there is no change here so that is something we're going to have to deal with but I'm interested to see exactly how the color varies it has a new processor inside, a 1.8 GHz quad-core processor coupled with a 1.4 GHz uh, quad-core processor making an octa-core processor which is uh, the big change here. There's 3 GB of RAM, the 8 megapixel camera and the 2.1 megapixel camera for front facing, a 4000 mAh battery and 32 GB of RAM. Fair enough. So there we have the tablet on top, we'll come back to that. Inside the box we get a UK adapter. We get a micro USB cable, unfortunately the, whilst this was released in I think late 2016, uh, the USB Type-C standard hadn't quite arrived and I have something red on my thumb. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's off the packaging from the very bag. We have a SIM card ejector tool, which is probably for the micro SD card. And a little warranty booklet. Quick start guide, sorry. And that's about it for the box. At least there's something in the box. And then the tablet itself, which is lovingly presented in this uh, protective cloth or film. Obviously you're going to need a case and probably a screen protector for this kind of tablet and straight up uh, it's incredibly light. It's an awful lot lighter than the Tab S. 
that's for sure. And uh, well, it's probably around the same weight as the newer iPads and iPad Mini. Obviously, this is this is the eight-inch version, so it's targeted at the iPad Mini. Down at the bottom, we have two capacitive buttons, either side of an actual clicky button, which I believe is a fingerprint reader as well, which the Tab S had. Uh, up this side, there is nothing. On the top, there is but a microphone hole. On this side, there is that uh, drawer for the micro SD card, then the volume button and the power button. And on the bottom is where all the action is. There's the micro USB charger port, two speakers at this end, which means it's firing out that way. There's no stereo sound or anything like that that can be achieved from this, but, well, I guess that's what headphones are for. And a 3.5mm headphone jack. Hurrah! And around the back, well, it fits quite nicely in, in the hand, to be honest, or at least my hand it does, because I've got quite big hands. Uh, we have a little bit of CE information down the bottom there. You can see there's a bit of a uh, marking there where they've printed that on. And we have the 8 megapixel camera up the top there, which has a little bit of protective film on it that some people might not actually know is there. Yes, uh, there's a protective film on that. It's particularly difficult to get off and you wouldn't realise that there's a protective film on it. So I imagine some people who have probably bought this might be thinking this camera is ultra lousy. There's also a bit of a mark here. Maybe that's from uh, from working on the the conveyor belt or something. Uh, the These holes here are uh, quite standard of Samsung Galaxy tablets that allow you to connect to the official covers and it provides a, a very very snug tight cover experience that you do pay an awful lot for those covers however they are very much worth it and you will thank the day that you decided to buy one of those because it keeps the profile of this very thin. I love my original Galaxy Tab S and that might, might be one of the reasons why I kept it because inside that cover it was just so thin and tight and I think this is going to be even thin and tighter and lighter too as well. So with any luck there's a little bit of juice in here. We'll get it powered up and have a look at this display. It does indeed and initially it looks quite tidy. The black is inky black with uh, some nice white crisp text on there. It'll probably take a wee while for this to, to boot up, so I'm going to get rid of that camera protection. That actually has a hole in it, so maybe I shouldn't have taken it off. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Okay, so we have got up to here, English United Kingdom version. We're going to hit start. Uh, we have 59% of battery in there. It's a 4000 milliamp hour battery, so it should last the best part of a day, hopefully and we'll connect to our local Wi-Fi and that's us connected. Um, the 4x5 aspect ratio that we have here as opposed to the 16x9 that's on the original Samsung Galaxy Tab S is actually quite nice. It's a, a nice kind of a, a widespread keyboard. It feels very good to type on. Whilst it won't be as good for media consumption um, it, it'll be a more productive tablet for those who do a lot of typing on the go. Okay, we're just checking those terms and conditions there to see what was exciting. Checking for a software update. There should hopefully be something because this now runs Nougat. It's not the newest, but it's getting there. Alright, so we're logging into our Google account. The screen timed out there whilst I was trying to uh, find the password there. And uh, I got to use the buttons on the side here and they're actually quite tactile and robust. They're uh, really rather nice. I had the original Samsung Galaxy Tab whenever it first came out all those years ago as the second tablet on the market after the iPad and the power button failed on it because it was just lousy. However, it lasted about a year. So I've always been a bit cautious about Samsung's power buttons and how many uh, clicks they can actually sustain. Okay, so we're going to restore apps from, well I suppose there's a tablet that I've used in the past but that'll take forever. Don't restore, we're going to set it up normally. Okay, we get to set up the fingerprint now. Alright, so it is the button at the bottom 
<clears throat> it's a little bit old-fashioned and it's a it's a swipey one. I don't think it's going to be quite as spectacular as some of the ones that we've seen on the backs of phones recently, unlike the BlackBerry Passport. And it asked me to turn sideways as well, which is a bit novel. Uh, that's a nicer idea, so uh, it, it prompts you in ways to change your, th your thumb positioning so that you're covering all aspects because you will be using it like that probably. Okay, I do have a Samsung kind, I believe. Okay, and instantly, because I have a Samsung Galaxy S8, it's asking me to restore data from various bits and pieces, documents, settings, apps, all that kind of stuff that it's found online. So, I'm going to not do that. And we can adjust the screen layout and get weather forecasts and things. So, the screen, I'm not initially noticing any big differences. Uh, other than the aspect ratio, which is going to take some getting used to. And one, the one thing I really want to do is to give you guys I, an idea of the benchmark. If I could find Google Play. There it is. <laughs> We're going to run Geekbench and a tutu on it. Although it's probably going to look to update a whole rake of Google uh, and pre-installed applications. And we'll let that install. While it's installing I'm always interested to see <clears throat> what there is on the tablet just to uh, well mess up your day to be honest and take up some of your vital storage. We have contacts, internet, gallery, camera, calculator, clock, my files, memo, calendar app, an email app, settings, galaxy apps, the Play Store, Play Music, a bunch of Google Suite things, a bunch of Microsoft Office things and Skype and OneDrive, that's very nice, my Galaxy and TV player, I don't know what my Galaxy is, that's probably the rewards thing, or maybe Bixby and all that kind of gunk which will update whenever it fancies it and then TV player we'll look at that some other time I don't pay the TV license so uh, over this side we have briefing which is flipboard and other than that we don't have too much in my files gallery so that's quite nice there's there isn't the amount of bloat that I had on the original Samsung Galaxy Tab S which had all kinds of stuff like daily mail and uh, the kids zone and all those sorts of things were installed by default that took up a massive amount of space so given that this is the uh, 32 gigabyte version we will have a quick look at uh, our storage to see how much space we have I'm missing it here You've probably spotted it, but no, there it is. So we have, oh, straight away, 10 gigabytes are used up. Well, I suppose probably 8. 22.8 gigabytes are free, which is not a lot. It's a bit disappointing, to be honest. I thought it was, I was hoping it was going to be about 24, 25. Uh, so TouchWiz is occupying a large amount of space. We'll have a look and see what we are running. So we have Android 7, that's out of the box, I haven't to, to install anything. Uh, we're on the August 2017 security patch level, which hopefully will receive an update fairly soon. There's a few notifications up there and hopefully one of them is it. Or maybe it'll come through at a later date. Uh, Nox version and stuff like that, so blah. And uh, whilst we're installing a few things, I can feel just over here, there's, there's quite a bit of heat coming off it, just in this area here. And we've got an tutu. And we'll hit test and see how we do. So while that's just finishing, <clears throat> I 
I'm having a look at the edging and the, the finish of the actual tablet here and you can see there that the screen is set into a container which is this back piece. Um, it's somewhat metal around the outside and there's a little bit of a chrome kind of finish there and the glass that is here which I, I believe is glass, maybe it is a plastic form uh, is there, there's a, a, a hair thin gap or maybe there isn't, maybe it's just my eyes deceiving me but it's just I've got the feeling that there's a tiniest gap there uh, not not uh, anything to worry about, of course. Uh, there's uh, the score from Antutu, which has given it a whopping 60,061. Um, I believe we can check that on the rankings. Now, obviously, this is a older tablet, but with a slightly newer processor than what it was originally released in. And there's the Samsung Galaxy Note 8, which is 173. Uh, thousand uh, moving down toward 60,000 to see uh, well, well we're at number 51 there so well below the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge as well which is 131,000 uh, so it's it's not the fastest but it's not the slowest either um, I think I did a, a film recently that came up with about 8,000 there uh, and it, it's a, a current release so we'll run Geekbench as well and see how well it performs. Okay, so we have 1,017 uh, in the single core score and 4,031 in the multi-core score. Here are some of the specs for those who are curious to see exactly what the difference is between the uh, Tab S2 and the Tab S2 New Edition. Uh, particularly these ones here. And then uh, some of the geekier things that uh, some people may be more interested in to see how well it performed on for example the crypto score the multi-core processor uh, those that live in Geekbench and like you to have a good score there's a you can freeze frame through this and have a quick look and see how well the uh, the memory latency is at two three four two great so uh, the tablet world And of course I forgot to look at the camera, which is uh, always important. Uh, there's not too many settings here because, uh, well actually you will notice that it is lacking a flash of any description. So it's not going to be the greatest camera in the world, but uh, hopefully those two shots that I took there are okay. So let me know if you have any questions in the comments box below. Hit that subscribe button because we would dearly love it. We are uh, sitting at around 500 subscribers and we're kind of begging to try and get up to a thousand to keep the channel going and to keep the Tech Addicts podcast going which is due to be resurrected fairly soon uh, the website as well of course techaddicts.uk give us a wee thumbs up if you fancy and other than that take care <laughs>